Hello! Welcome back to Lonely, Lonely, Lonely Trollops. Uh, this is me doing the next chap 20 chapters of The American Senator uh, by Anthony Trollope, an 1877 book. I said 1875 in my last video. It was written in 1875, published as full as a book in 1877, serialized somewhere in between there. Uh, so yeah, this is chapters uh, 21, The First Evening at Rufford Hall. Uh, and then you jump into uh, volume two and getting all the way to chapter 13, Lord Rufford wants to see a horse. So let's launch, launch into this. Um, we'll start off with uh, Mary Masters. Mary Masters gets coerced into uh, saying, okay, I will consider you Laurie Tw Twentyman, Larry Twentyman, because all my family wants you to uh, me to marry you because even though you're a, just a simple yeoman farmer and I don't really love you and I'm actually in love with somebody who's a more upper class, a more more higher, a more of a, a gentleman. Uh, but we're going to cast this because it's a Victorian novel. It's not snobbery as so much as it's ah uh, my I'm I'm a I'm I've been raised as a as a highborn, so I'm going to I'm going to kind of connect with a highborn at least. That's a part of the cynical part of what I would I would say. It is very much cast as she just doesn't love the guy. Uh, and um, very much to get us on our side, Trollope has uh, the evil stepmother, well, not evil, but kind of just annoyingly kind of um, bullying uh, stepmother who's you know, so, ah, as all these all these mothers and fathers are, they're just trying to do the best for their children, uh, even though they do it in kind of a bullying kind of, I'm not going to listen to any of your feelings kind of way. Um, so they she, they bully her into basically saying, okay, I'll give it six months, which very annoyingly um, gets taken as, ah, well, you've, you've said six months, you've got doubt, thus that's good, good enough as consent, which is, feels really gross, at least to a modern sensibility of, um, and I mean, I think even in the book, it's not po po posited as a, as a, as a positive thing. Mary is bullied into this. She says the six months and basically then everyone says, oh, well, basically you're going to get married in a couple of months then because she's basically said yes. It's like, oh, great, 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 greats against me because it's like, you're not listening to what I'm saying. You're not listening to my feelings. You're just bullying ahead and just washing over me. I guess I'm a little triggered there. Um, but in the end, in the end, she, um, she does actually get to hang out with the actual guy that she uh, loves, this uh, Reginald Morton, and realizes, no, I'm not, I'm not going to marry you. S sends sends him sends him a definite cut off letter. Her father lets her. Well, her father is. It's in in Trollops. It's like it, it, it's funny in Victorian stuff. You have the bullying mother, and you have the kind hearted good father, which sometimes I feel like is a cloak for the heavily patriarchal system that we're going to have. It's like, oh, it's the good, it's a good father. It wasn't, wasn't the one who was forcing her into this. It was, it was the mother. It was the mother who did all this, which is, it's an interesting psychology in itself. But yes, he lets her mail the letter. Laurie Twentyman is heartbroken by this. And um, he has not actually been con shown as uh, somebody who's actually kind of pursuing her or forcing her to do anything. It's a lot more of that pressure is coming from uh, the, the evil stepmother, um, not evil stepmother, but, you know, annoyingly bullying stepmother. And he's heartbroken by this. And he actually is like, I'm going to sell my farm and, and like move to New Zealand or somewhere. Uh, I, I just, my heart's not in it anymore. And uh, uh, he, he actually tells John Morton, the other Morton in the book, this, and, and, you know, he says like, you know, you should probably, you shouldn't do this. You should like wait a year before you make such a decision because you can't get your property back, you know? If you regret this, you regret this for the rest of your life, and it's like it's a super important, you know, thing of this is your family, this is your your um, this is your stake in life. This is this is like really important property. Property is such a fundamental thing. Uh, even nowadays, it's like that's a fundamental thing, and if you if you give that away, you're not going to get it back. Um, this is a part like your I think his great grandfather, his grandfather got this land, and it's like you know, you've been doing really well. You're a smart farmer. It's like, don't, don't give this all away. So we're kind of left with that, which is like, it, that's, that's the good thing of Trollope is like, you have like Mary Masters who you like, you know, every one of these people can just screw off and let her do what she wants to do. Um, 
but then you've got um you've got uh Larry Twentyman who's actually and he's genuinely in love with her and he's not actually forcing her but he's heartbroken and he's maybe going to do a foolish thing and you feel for him and you get that competing sympathies not that you actually want Mary to marry him but you just want him to kind of like maybe get his head straight and you know probably find oh the uh the younger daughter of, of the same household is probably who he's going to end up with who knows um so yeah there's that now Interestingly enough, because Trollope is good at this stuff, this story kind of mirrors stuff that's happening with um, Arabella Trefoil, who I'm actually enjoying because she's so dumb. She is so dumb for a gold digger or a kind of a husband hunter, someone who wants to claw her way up in society. She's so dumb, uh, which finds, I find in a way kind of makes her endearing uh, in the sense that he's, she's kind of, br kind of rather brutally kind of cavalierly kind of push John Morton aside, trying to still keep a couple of hooks in him because she's chasing after Lord Rufford, Rufford, uh, this upper, upper class dude, except it seems reading this, it's like, there's no chance that he's going to actually marry you. Uh, and indeed, even, even because even with a hunting accident, she kind of throws herself in her, in his arms and kind of uses, uses like this horrible hunting accident, uh, as a pretext to kind of bond with him. Um, you know, the death of another man to bond with him. Uh, I still feel, I still feel kind of a sympathy for her because she's so transparently going to fail in what she's doing. And um, indeed, by the end of these chapters, uh, with our great Marvel crossover, uh, because even though this is a standalone trollop, we get uh, cameos by uh, the uh, Duchess of Omnium, Lady Glencora, and, uh, and uh, Lady Children uh, uh, from... From uh, you know, from uh, your uh, from can you forgive her? The first of the Palliser novels and uh, Phineas Finn, uh, one of the uh, further further uh, Palliser novels. Nice nice thumpers there. Uh, actually, finally, I, I finally I find their kind of their cameos. I don't know. Maybe it's just at the time of life they are at this point, but I don't get a Glencora feeling from her. Like you know. I, 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 Lady Glencora, the Lady Glencora I thought would like, you know, like, oh, she's chasing after a lord and it's kind of a doomed romance. I, I would, I would expect Lady Glencora to be a little less sensible about stuff like this, but, uh, she very obviously sees, uh, Lord Rufferford is one of these young men who isn't going to settle down until it's like, oh, I need to spit out a, an heir and we'll marry some young thing when he's an old dude. Uh, and not give a, not give a crap about whoever he marries then, but he's young and he's, sowing his wild oats and all those other entitled things that young at rich assholes get to do uh, at this point in um well at all points in history isn't it um but so she she quite clearly sees i think at the at the very end like yeah no no um lord rufferford even if there was even if there was an engagement lord rufferford is not going to keep it and arabella Arabella is so dumb about this. She bald faced lies that, oh yeah, he told me he loved me and that, oh, he's going to marry me. And, oh, could you, could you, uh, Duchess of Omnium, get the Duke to talk to him about that? It's just like, it's so, so obvious. And like, they're, they're, if they try and pin down Rufford, he is most definitely just going to say, nope, I, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Bye. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, it was nice to flirt with you, but that's all I'm here for is shit some giggles i'm i'm not actually going to do anything so but it's interesting to put uh lady arabella who not lady arabella Ar arabella trefoil who's questing after this old this this um this duke for um this lord for obviously kind of venal like oh i want power i want i want to be a powerful woman's man a woman and i want to be high up in society trans uh, kind of compare that with Mary Masters, who's seen as, you know, she's the good woman of the book and she's rejecting a lowborn guy, Larry Twentyman, for a higher guy, uh, Reg um, not, yes, Reginald Morton. God, I'm getting, there's other books that are now shifting into my head, into my head here. Um, you know, it's the two two women who are both doing the same who are both doing the same thing. Both of them are kind of saying like, "I don't want to marry this lower class guy. I want to go for the higher higher class guy." But uh, Arabella is doing it for venal reasons, whereas uh, Mary Masters is presented as being kind of very pure and doing it for love. Though, I I, I guess maybe in my in my um, in my uh, cynicism i'm like are you really doing it for love or is it sort of like you also sort of 
want want that kind of that uh, upper you want you don't want to lower yourself you've you've been raised as as kind of um you've been given an upper class kind of an upper upper um society kind of education and standing and you can't really lower yourself you can't really love that guy that farmer guy who who is who is you know well off in his own way and is but is a farmer is a farmer yeoman farmer um you know but uh so it's it's interesting contrasting contrasting the two women. It's like I like it when um, um, Trollope is really good at kind of interweaving his stories. That you have to like think, oh, why do I feel this way about Mary Masters, but I feel this way about uh, uh, Arabella Trefoil, and I, I kind of feel more sympathy for Arabella Trefoil because she's so dumb. Uh, maybe it's my own my own self sabotage and the ways that I know that I am dumb, dumb, dumb. <laughs> Like making this, make, making a, a channel that I don't want anyone to watch, uh, and, and you know it's like I'm I'm self sabotaging myself the same way that Arabella Trefoil is, um, you know, a uh, <laughs> little swerve into autobiography there. Um, so yeah, yeah, um, and I guess the other thing is yes, I mean the thing I have to give about Trollope is yes, he loves having his uh, fox hunts and kind of glorifying them, but he always seems to make a point of. There was a horrible fall and a horse gets, you know, uh, the, the, the horse gets shot. Uh, well, no, actually, well, this one, actually, it's, I think it is actually in Can You Forgive Her that the, is it, uh, I think, I think they end up, it's a horse killer. Um, Lord Chiltern is a horse killer uh, in this book. He basically rides the horse so hard that he, he crashes it and it, and it, yeah, it has to be shot. Uh, in this book, um the um the guy was it his name Kane Kane back Kane back uh they have a sh shot of him like shot it is really shot Tr um Trollope is really good at dramatizing these things of of Kane back riding the horse and he's just riding it full out and it's like he's doing it beyond the horse's capability the horse's horse crashes falls over rolls over Kane back Kane back's like uh the horse gets up and kicks and whacks him right in the head. Uh, and then he dies a lingering death, which Arabella Trefoil uses to her advantage to try and get herself closer to Lord Ruff Rufford. Um, but uh, yeah, so he dies and they shoot the horse. And the, I think the thing, the, 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 the point of that is, oh, the horse killed the man. Therefore, the horse must die. Kind of like if a dog bites, somebody has to be destroyed, which um, it's like, no, came back. Came back, did that to himself, and why did this horse have to get shot for that? Uh, seems, at least that's my interpretation of it. Maybe the horse was injured, but I really get the sense it's like the horse was shot because came back was was got kicked by kicked in the head by this horse, uh, and it again leaves that just horrible. Like this is a disgusting <laughs> to me. A disgusting sport, which is not only is it uh, killing killing foxes, uh, it is uh, it is um, you get you get you consistently in Trollope seem to get brutes uh, abusing horses uh, in in these books. Uh, for all the horses that I'm sure just love the run and the energy and wouldn't exist if there wasn't for this demand for horses to ride for fox hunting. It's one of those things. Like if there was isn't fox hunting. Uh, then probably a lot less of these horses are bred and they don't exist uh, and they don't get to enjoy the, 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 their life until I guess they probably get taken out and shot when they're no longer needed. Um, it's, it's that, it's that complicated thing. I, you know, you don't want to be a, um, uh, horse, you know, animals and humans have this kind of this relationship, but it's a relationship where the humans are most definitely using the animals uh and uh i get i think i get i just get upset when uh uh humans are obviously using animals in in terrible terrible ways <laughs> and this be, this comes from somebody who partakes partakes blissfully um most of the time blissfully into like our uh our our, our system of the uh our, our 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 farm our farm system where we horribly torture animals uh, every single day in the millions and the millions, millions so that I can have cheap meat, uh, delivered to the grocery store for me to pick up. And, uh, uh, I only periodically think about that. All right. Well, there, there, I've gone off on many tangents and I don't even have to edit them all, any of them out because this is just me nattering about a book and what comes up for me. 
Uh, next time on the Lonely Trollop, the, the American Senator edition, I will be doing uh, from from uh, chapter 14 of volume two, uh, the senator is badly treated. I don't think we got much about uh, Senator go to bed in this one. Uh, maybe there's, I think there was some dropping of the uh, case. The case got dropped. Uh, they paid off the guy, something like that. The senator is badly treated in uh, chapter four, 14 of volume two to chapter six of volume three, again at mistletoe. Mistletoe being the luxuriously fabulous estate of uh, the the um, Duke and Duchess of Omnium. So that's good to see. We'll see more of uh, Lady Glencora. Um, hopefully being a little bit more Lady Glencora-ish. Uh, I, 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 I think a part of what I enjoy about her is her foolishness. Her, her foolishnessness. Um, I mean, maybe a part of why that sympathy isn't being aroused is because she can quite easily see that... Uh, well, not all she can easily see. In some ways, she seem, the Duchess seems to think that... Um, Arabella is just being is being kind of a dumb young woman who's infatuated with Lord Rutherford. She doesn't quite see that she's got these um, more more avious, aviistic kind of uh, uh, motiv motivations. Maybe she does see it, and that's why she isn't being as foolish because she doesn't see this as a romant romantic. This is someone who's on the make, uh, as it was. So yeah, yeah, that's what I have now. All right, more videos later.